Okay, I'll open up for questions. made the decision to announce that they're starting Justin Fields this week. Uh, and he's a, I know you play obviously Lamar Jackson and some other Georgia quarterbacks so far this year, but what is somebody that has mobility, both throwing the ball and running the ball? Well, you just keep seeing the, the, the plays from the preseason to now. You're just seeing a guy keep getting better. Uh, very athletic, very strong, uh, throws a really good deep ball, uh, athletic, you know, can make plays. He looks downfield when he's, you know, scrambling and getting away from the rush. So uh, he's been impressive. I think the biggest stat is they've had like 14 or 15 explosive plays on the year, which is down. But last week they had seven uh, when he was at quarterback. So he's a guy that can definitely stretch the field on us. Just, uh, you're down a couple of cornerbacks uh, after Monday night. Meek Robertson seemed like he kind of held it down pretty good uh, when he came in. Is that sort of the plan? If those two can't play. Yeah. Uh, you know what they did? We had a, a number of guys come in and play some different positions. And, you know, they held up pretty well. So it was good to see that from a meet. But, um, you know, we're still moving some guys around trying to find out the best combination. The last couple of games, uh, especially, it seems like Denzel Perryman's had, like, uh, you know, not even necessarily big plays, but big hits or, like, hustle plays. It really seems to energize everyone. I'm sure you like him for more reasons than just that. But... Is that one thing he, he's always brought? Yeah, he's, he's been like that now. I, I mentioned that, that, you know, in the huddle, just his presence in there, his leadership, but he backs it up with this on-the-field play. He brings that physical presence to our defense. You know, I think they know that part of him. So, uh, you know, he's doing a good job in tackling and understanding a lot of the concepts we're teaching him. So he, he's doing a nice job, and, you know, he's, he's that leader for us at that position. Gus, uh, Bill spoke today in Chicago, and he talked about, Learn, watching and learning and understanding the nuances of the coordinator. And he made the comment, he said, you know, I've coached against him quite a bit. And I, I could be wrong, but I think maybe your first year in Seattle was his last year. Yeah. What do you remember about his philosophies in terms of, you know, how you need to use your rushing attack against what he likes to do? Right. Like, I like field. He, he's a very detailed person. And I, what I found out from him is, just my time with him, he's always going to try to put position or players in position so they can be successful. Did a really good job trying to utilize the skill set of players, and um, you know, and he has a he's got a strong philosophy, and I think he's very open and he'll mesh it together with what they do in Chicago. But I think that he's really ultimately looking at what gives the quarterback the best chance to be successful and their offense. We we often talk about when a quarterback changes their tendencies and how you you know prepare for them differently. A running back change, does that make any difference? Is there tendencies you can pick up on? Yeah, we, we try to find out, you know, when a running back's in the game because they have different running styles. You know, we saw that last week, right? There's a different running style based on who's in the game. So, you know, Damon Williams is a guy we got a lot of respect for. We've seen him play multiple times when he was in Kansas City. And, um, you know, he's been very effective. He's a very talented back. So learning his style and, you know, how he operates compared to, you know, who else is in the game. So uh, it's one thing that we look at each week is the running styles of each back, you know, the styles of runs they like with them. So, you know, he, he's a guy that can really do it all. He can run inside, outside, attack the perimeter. Uh, you know, he's a guy that doesn't shy away from contact. Um, you know, he gets close to the sideline. He likes to stay in bounds and try to get as many yards as he can. So there's some distinct personalities with him that has made him successful. Gus, you went out and signed Brandon this week. I'm just curious, any chance that we might be able to see him on the field? Uh, we'll see. You know, he's, he's a guy that he's got a quick learning curve. He understands a lot of the things, you know, when we reviewed it with him. Obviously, we're doing some things different, but he, he's a quick study on that part of it. That's why he was so beneficial. Plus, he was a talented player. We liked him when we were there. So he's a long, tall type of corner. You know, he's got some length to him and very sharp. So, you know, hopefully we can get him schooled up here real quick. Um, Darius Wyland missed two years of football, uh, so I'm sure there's some rust that he had to shake off. Uh, but he seems like he's playing pretty well. Has he given you what you pretty well? Yeah, I mean, he's really a flash guy. He can make some splash plays like he does. Um, you know, our challenge is the consistency, play in and play out. But, you know, when it gets to game day, he really does a good job for us. And he's added that dimension. Whenever you can get some inside pressure to affect the quarterback, that's always a big deal. You're not just counting on the outside guys. And it helps those guys, too. So, he, you know, that's kind of been his forte is he, he'll make some splash plays like that. And he did a good job for us. What about the success you've had with the, with the edge rush and um, they talked about it today about the, the multi-tight end sets that they used. Does that make it difficult 
for you, or do you have to change your, your way of uh, You know what, I th we'll adjust a little bit based off that, some of the things they do. Uh, we're, seeing, we're starting to see a little bit more max protection, you know, chips on the perimeter, so we'll have to adjust to that part of it to make sure that the rushers get a chance to, to operate. But, uh, you know, it, it, they're like a lot of teams. They have their own philosophy, and, and I'm sure they'll try to stick with it and really – just like we mentioned before with Coach Laser, he's going to do what he thinks he needs to do to, you know, help the quarterback be successful. Coach, with the amount of injuries that have happened in the secondary, how beneficial is it to have a rookie like Nate Hobson playing at the level he's at, not only just that nickel, but can also be interchangeable outside? Well, that, that's one of the benefits of, of a guy like Nate is that, you know, he's a sharp kid. We said that it wasn't too big for him, and we felt that, so we challenged him on learning multiple positions for a situation like what took place on Monday. So... He, he's done a good job with that. It gives us some flexibility, but we had some guys, you know, Teamer hasn't played much nickel for us, and he went in there and played nickel. He's another guy that, you know, Coach Miles does a great job in that room, making sure that everybody knows what everybody's doing and, and he, the drill work. You know, corners will do drill work as a, a, a flat defender and just for situations like that. So, you know, we're, we weren't perfect, but we were, you know, guys could go in there and look like football. Those lines, uh, Trayvon Moore, uh, seems like he's also settling in as, as well. He did. I thought he had a really good day. There's a couple of those runs now, just like what we need, an eraser tackler. Uh, he got him down and gave us another chance. So we haven't seen I thought he might get tested a little bit more uh, than he did. But, uh, you know, as far as the run game and coming up and making some sure tackles, he did that. Uh, you asked Ole about getting Hunter Renfro for defense. Yeah, I know, right? Gee, what a, I mean, we talked about that in defense and show that's a perfect, you know, strike zone tackle, head up, and, you know, uh, he did a great job. He mentioned to me before a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, hey, if you need a free safety in a pinch, you know, and, uh, and then when I saw that, I said, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. So in Hail Mary situations, that might be Yeah, right? right? I, mean, he, I mean, he's just a, you know, a, a good overall football player. It's not surprising just the way, you know, he understands the game so well. I mean, he's great for a coach to have that kind of security know back there that he kind of fixes things. So, you know, we just got to do a better job of operating. That was on us as a defense, not getting the right personnel out there. That's good. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you Right tackle. Is that something that you guys are contemplating or tinkering with? No, I, yeah, I just think, uh, you know, we're constantly in the way that we train our offensive linemen is to play the multiple positions. So we're still looking uh, just trying different ways to get our five best guys on the field. And uh, we just have moved some different guys around, to be honest with you. We've moved a couple guys in there. So uh, just trying to find that combination. Craig, with Leatherwood, he's a guy that played guard in, in college and you know, played an entire season at that position. Did that kind of history and have, I mean, have familiarity at that position play into Yeah, oh, no question. And we're always looking for versatility when we're looking at uh, offensive linemen in the draft. And uh, the ability to play multiple positions, which someone like you know Alex has done, allows us to experiment somewhat. Uh, and especially when we have – you know, had the injuries that we have that we'll continue to move guys around. And, and it's all about trying to find the five best uh, on the field. So, you know, we're just uh, looking at a couple different guys. When it comes to just overall play at offensive line, uh, you know, I know last week was, was probably, you know, referee being in pass protection and, you know, not being able to run the ball. I know the, the running issues have been an issue all season. Um, just overall as a unit, you know, where do, where do you think improvement needs to be made? Uh, you know, there's no, there's a number of areas that we can improve upon, and it's not just the offensive line. Certainly, the running backs, the quarterback can put us in better situations as well, uh, whether it be protection or in the run game. So, uh, you know, we we uh, as a, as a unit, really, we all take responsibility for it, including the coaching staff. And uh, again, it's a process. We're just working on it and trying to get better, like, like we've talked about from day one. It's 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 an ongoing process. Certainly, it's an area that we have looked at and, and realized we need to address, and the, uh, anyone on the outside can see that. We'll continue to uh, emphasize and address it in how we practice and how we prepare and the game plan that we put together. But uh, it's just an ongoing process. Thank you. Yeah, no, actually, good. sorry. Paul, what do you got? So if, like you said, you're just trying to get the five best guys in there and the five best the combination there, what, what would Alex bring? 
line instead of being out on the outside? Uh, well, he, you know, he's played it again. When we evaluated him for the draft, certainly, as you know, before he became the right tackle Alabama, he played inside. Uh, very strong. We've mentioned before he's an extremely strong run blocker. He's been an, a very intelligent player. And again, his athletic athleticism allows him to be able to play multiple positions, whether it be he can play a guard on either side or, and in our opinion, tackle on either side. Uh, you know, as he continues to mature in the league. Uh, so we just have always, we like the versatility that he had when we drafted him. And now again, uh, as we're looking at moving guys around again, it's, it's really nothing new. Uh, we do it throughout the season and uh, in practice and, and moving guys uh, because of injury, you know, uh, concerns that may happen throughout the season. So uh, we just really have liked his versatility uh, and they're not a lot, not, not everyone can move inside, but he is one of our tackles that can move inside. So uh, we're just, just uh, again, experimenting. Uh, Coach, even dating back to last season when you had to come in for Trent Brown, what have you seen just from the time that you've been here, the maturation and development of Brandon Parker that you feel confident putting in that position? Yeah, we say he's a fourth-year player. He knows our system very well. He's played for, you know, for, for us now for four seasons. So... Uh, he's gotten bigger, stronger. As we talk about the, the development of, of our players, we expect them every year to get better and to show that the arrow is still moving up, and, and he's shown that to us. Uh, I think we think he's come a long way from when he actually started for us, uh, you know, in his first two years. So um, we're happy with uh, his development. Uh, we still think that uh, he's not even close to hitting his ceiling. Uh, he'll continue to get better. So... Uh, it's just been a, a continued uh, growth throughout the four years that he's been here. What have you, what have you seen the teams trying to attack uh, and defend Darren Waller? Uh, you know, th we've seen combination coverages. Uh, we've seen them try and put their best corner on him, their best player on the back end, and, and the combination coverages or straight zone, leaving a safety over the top of them. So a number of different ways that they've uh, looked to cover him. But to be honest with you, it's, it's been more about the – development and the confidence in both Edwards and Ruggs, to be honest with you, and, and, and to not take a look at Hunter Renfro and say he's not one of the better slots in the league, it'd be doing a disservice to the kid because he's played very well through the first quarter of the season. So it's really about the development of those younger receivers that, that when we do see um, a team that is trying to take away Darren Waller, we're, we're comfortable going to those other guys. So uh, we know that Darren's a, a – Obviously, a premier tight end in this league, and we'll continue to find ways to get him involved. But if they want to try and take him away, we really feel good about the other guys that we're going to. He's, we, saw, we saw Hunter score, you know, back-to-back -back weeks on that kind of yeah. strange route. I don't even know how to really describe yeah. it. And it seems like there's things he could do off of that now too, where now people are going to be prepared for that, and he's, he's got other. Yeah, and you know, he developed that route off of an original. You know, we'd call it. A, it's a double move. Now he's made a triple move. Uh, so you go back to maybe just running the, the singular move. It doesn't need to double anybody up. So I think anytime we say we'd like to, and we're based on our f philosophy offensive-wise, is uh, we like to do things that look the same to the defense but are different, you know. So uh, we can kind of give them the similar looks but give them something different off of it, and then uh, we're doing the right things. And, and he's, he's a guy that's been able to master some of those inside slot moves. Much as you know, Khalil gets the headlines. They have 15 sacks. Uh, I assume you're a lot more worried about just him, as good as he is. Yeah, very strong defensive line. You know, so and we'll see. You know, Hicks has been out, so he's a, he's one of their better premier inside rushers. So uh, we're not sure yet where where he's at, but uh, certainly uh, between Quinn and Mack, you know, they got two premier edge rushers. It seems like we've seen that, you know, throughout this first quarter of the season, and so. Um, you know, we're seeing it every day out of Max and Yannick. So we've, we've got two good players that our tackles get to work against every day. So, and that's the NFL. You're going to find those premier rushers on most teams. So, but overall, very strong on the D-line. Thank you. Thanks. My apologies for everybody who needed me yesterday. Questions for me? Just in your in your mind, how have the first four games of your career gone? Um, I think uh, I've got off, you know, to to a good start. But honestly, I think I I could have played better 
And I'm just trying to improve every day and just build on every game. You were supposed to uh, face Justin Fields uh, last year at Illinois. The game got canceled late. I'm just wondering, that, that probably means you've kind of prepared for him and seen more of him than just about anyone. Uh, does that help you at all? Just what have you seen from him? Um, I think a little bit. I think so a little bit. But obviously, this is a different level. And, you know, different things go into preparing for that. And he's on a different team. But I do, I do know about him. I did get to prepare for him uh, last year. So, obviously, that helps. Has there, has there been any surprises for you? I mean, obviously everybody has been raving about how you played and, and you've been very impressive for you know, for a rookie for anybody, really. But has there been anything that surprised you? Was there anything that was difficult about the transition? Um, I, I, w I wouldn't say, like, really difficult. Um, I just, you know, really just tried to put my, put my head down and, and get to it and take whatever challenges come. And that's how I just been handling everything. I just feel I just take everything as a challenge, and and I just try to take it head on. Now you hear a lot of rookies talk about um, when they first come in with the influx of information. It's almost like taking trying to drink from a fire hose, right? There's mm -hmm. so much stuff coming at you, and they talk about the speed of the game. Has it or how has it slowed down for you through these first four games? Um, I think really in, in camp, I, our offense did a good job preparing me for the speed because we got a lot of speed on our offense and our offense goes really fast. So I feel like by the time um, I was in those preseason games and then I got to play in the real regular season games, I was used to that speed because our offense always went fast from day one when I got there. So it just, you know, everything just got slower and slower every day as I went on. But like I said, I still got um, places to grow and, and things to get better at. So. Where can you get better? I just feel like um, I could get better at just recognizing things quicker and, you know, just, just being more um, patient and just things like that. And after the first couple of games, it's already been shown that you're one of the better open tacklers, open field tacklers on the team. Is that, would you say, your best attribute or your most enjoyable part of the game? Um, I would say it's a strong suit of mine. I want to say it's my best attribute. But I, I would definitely say it's a strong suit and, and something I like to do. So. Nate, would you please talk about your vision and your ability to see the field? And watching you on tape, there's some things your eyes are one way, but you're seeing over here. Can you talk about that, please? Um, yeah, like like I said, um, I feel like my the offense that I faced um, this summer in camp, it just it just did a good job in preparing me and then being able like. Prior in my career playing corner, now I play nickel and just playing different spots. I can like you know maybe look across the formation, being have played nickel and see if somebody's lined up in a certain spot that they probably coming back my way or this formation probably is giving away that and just you know being being aware um, and things like that. I've been able to you know see things that maybe I probably wouldn't have saw in the past. You were confident, like from right from the jump, from our draft night. We, you know, we talked to you and we heard like you were you were believing in yourself and your abilities. I guess what did you know that everybody else didn't know? I just felt like I just, I knew I hadn't play I hadn't played my best ball, like in college I hadn't played my best ball, and I knew what I was capable of and what I could do, and just people just didn't see that or you know they didn't recognize that yet. And uh, but I, I knew, you know, if I work hard enough and put my mind to it, what I could do. But like I said, I'm still I still got to get way better. I feel like I'm still and I'm striving for that every day. So now you've made that transition, obviously, from the outside to, to the slot if you needed to with the injuries that are happening on this team. How easy or how hard would it be to go back to the outside right now? Yeah, it, it, I played in the Chargers game and. You know, I just feel like it's something I'm capable of doing. That's what I played my whole college career. So obviously, I'm I'm comfortable out there. Like, if the team needs me to do that, then that's what I'm gonna do for the team. It's playing blank period, and I feel like, like I could do that. I'm capable. So, kind of piggybacking off that question, um, I'm sure it's easier when you know you're playing one or the other going into the week. But what does it kind of take to be able to flip between those two? Just kind of you know, almost drop it down. Yeah, it's it's definitely a. a a switch, you know, flip. They got a switch because 
playing uh, in the slot and playing nickel is definitely more aggressive, and I feel like you got to think a little bit more because um, it's kind of linebackerish. You know, sometimes I line up in linebacker spot, sometimes I line up safety spot, corner spot, and when I go back to corner, um, kind of a mindset change, but it, it's nothing really. Our coaches do a good job of prepping me in that because I get some corner, corner reps in here and there, so. Uh, you left for a little bit from the game. I think you were evaluated. Were you concerned at all that, that you'd be missing time, or were you you knew you were fine? No, nah, no, I knew I was fine. I uh, I didn't want to come off the field. I was, it was like protocol. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.